What is going on people? With the January transfer window officially coming to a close, I thought today would be a fantastic opportunity to talk about Arsenal Football Club and just explore some of the business that they have done. So in today's video, we're going to be just talking about Arsenal signings and obviously the most notable one being Jorginho. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's going to take me a long time to get used to seeing this guy in red. This signing just seems weird. It makes sense in terms of the profile of player that he is and what he brings to the team, which we'll talk about in a moment, but I just can't wrap my head around Jorginho being an Arsenal player and also isn't it just hilarious how Arsenal have signed yet another Chelsea player that Chelsea don't really want at the moment I find there's a bit of humor in that and just this comic cycle between Arsenal and Chelsea that continues where Arsenal continue to sign ex-Chelsea players now the difference between Jorginho and previous players that um, Arsenal have signed is I don't think they're giving this guy a retirement package I think that Jorginho will actually offer Arsenal something tangible in the short term first and foremost I think what's most obvious is aside from his playing ability the personality that he brings to the dressing room is really important Jorginho is a leader he's somebody who's won a Euros he's somebody who's won a Champions League and he's somebody who knows what most of those Arsenal players don't know which is how to win in high pressure situations that is really important because so far Arsenal only really have Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus and to a certain extent Kieran Tinney who doesn't even start and hasn't really done it in one of the top five leagues in Europe so they don't really have an abundance of a winning mentality in that team. And I think that Jorginho, first and foremost, brings that to the table. But beyond that, in terms of the style of play and where he will play for Arsenal, he actually solves a very key problem. Because as we know, one of the biggest talking points around Arsenal and one of the biggest arguments and proponents as to why many people believe they may not go on to win the league is because... They're one Thomas Party injury away from completely changing and overhauling their play playing style. Because you remove Thomas Party from this team and suddenly Xhaka probably has to play in a double pivot with either Sambi Lukonga or whoever else Arsenal have. Now, I know Sambi Lukonga has gone out on loan, but that was the scenario that Chelsea were in. I mean, Arsenal, sorry, were in before they signed Jorginho. Now that you have Jorginho, you actually have somebody who can slot in here. And yes, he may not be able to do the job that Thomas Party can do in terms of being a defensive destroyer. But because Arsenal plays such a dominant um, possession-based style, I think that Jorginho will be comfortable and his deficiencies will be hidden in the Arsenal system. Because remember, Jorginho is a player who's extremely proficient at looking after the ball. He's not a creative midfielder. He's not a deep line playmaker, but he is somebody who looks after the ball and links the defense with the attack. He's somebody who moves from side to side, basically making himself a good passing option and receiving the ball, then quickly and swiftly moving it up the field to the next person. That's what Jorginho really excels at. He really genuinely is a link between the back four and the attack. On top of that, he's somebody, when you watch Jorginho play, his head is always on a swivel. He's always scanning. He's always looking around. Him. He's a really intelligent player in terms of figuring out where people are and finding the right pass. And that's why he's got such good statistics when it comes to his ball progression and his ability to look after the ball. The problem is, though, he has deficiencies, right? Whenever Arsenal lose the ball in transition, they're going to have a problem with Jorginho, mainly because of his lack of pace and his lack of recovery. Arsenal are a team that when you watch them play, if you do watch a lot of Arsenal games, you'll notice that they sort of play in this in this sort of three um, two, three, three, five shape when they're on the halfway line. Basically, Ben White and Zinchenko will invert oftentimes and occupy the midfield spaces whilst Odegaard and Xhaka bomb up. So what you what you get usually with Arsenal is the scenario where Party will be here on the halfway line pretty much with Saliba and Gabriel and Zinchenko or Ben White will be tucking in really narrow to try overload the opposition. You remove Party from the situation and you put Jorginho, Jorginho is really vulnerable on the counter and if Saliba and Gabriel for whatever reason are not in the adequate position and Jorginho is the one who is the last man on the halfway line and has to defend suddenly Arsenal have a problem because one-on-one -on -one defending is not his strength, not just in terms of pace and not being very agile, but also just in terms of being a defensive-minded midfielder. He's not there. Jorginho is a ball-playing midfielder. That's what he excels at. Off the ball, not particularly great. Now, people can compliment his work rate. People can say he's very tenacious. And I agree with all of those things. But hard work just isn't enough when you don't have the ability to read the play three or four steps ahead and be proactive enough to put yourself in positions where your pace doesn't matter. 
Now all of a sudden you can actually stop an attack before it even happens because you know you're not the quickest of players so you position yourself adequately enough and you react quickly enough so that it doesn't matter. I don't think Jorginho can do that at the level that Arsenal need. However, again, because Arsenal dominates so much of the ball and because Arsenal is such a good team this season, I don't think it will matter too much. I don't think it will matter too much. Maybe I'm wrong in that, but anyways, let's move on. Another player that Arsenal signed is obviously Trossard. This is a player who is very, very different to Jorginho, I think, obviously, because he plays in a completely different position. But more than that, I think he's somebody who's very quick, somebody who's very athletic, and somebody who is already Premier League proven and was in good form before coming to Arsenal. I think the difference between him and Jorginho is Jorginho was kind of a left field signing that, you know, it, it seemed like Chelsea didn't really want him and were happy to let him go. Whereas Trossard is a player that is going to be missed at Brighton. Trossard is a fantastic player. His dribbling is really good because he's two-footed, which makes him unpredictable. On top of that, his technical ability in terms of passing the ball and his creativity will be really useful for Arsenal on that left-hand side. And uh, between you and me, don't say it out loud, but I actually think Martinelli has been a bit of a weakness sometimes for Arsenal. Shh, don't tell Arsenal fans because they're going to lose their absolute minds. But I genuinely don't think Martinelli has had the best of seasons with Arsenal. He's had moments and flashes where I thought, damn, this kid looks really good. But compared to Saka, he's been relatively quiet in a lot of the games that I've watched for Arsenal. And that's not to say he's been bad. I'm just saying he's been, he's been very quiet. And there have been moments where I thought, man, imagine if Arsenal could bring someone on off the bench for Martinelli when he's having a quiet game that can really spice things up, especially in that draw against Newcastle, that loss against um, Manchester United at Old Trafford, and even the game at the Emirates. Even though Arsenal won that game, I mean, the first half was not that pretty for Martinelli. So there's moments this season where I can sort of pick apart holes in Martinelli's performance. And I think that a signing like Trussard is just absolutely brilliant because now he solves that issue. When Martinelli isn't playing particularly well, you've got someone like Trussard who's Premier League proven, who can dribble. He's not afraid to take a man on. He's not afraid to be extremely direct, but he also has the technical ability to be indirect. He also has the discipline to say, I'm not going to take this man on. Instead, I'm just going to overlay, the, um, I'm going to lay off the ball to Zinchenko or I'm going to pass it back into Xhaka's path. You know, he has the tactical intelligence and the understanding to play the way that Arsenal play. At least that's what I believe because he's now played under Roberto De Zerbi and he's also played under Graham Potter, who are both very tactically astute managers. So I think he will fit seamlessly into Mikel Arteta's system. I think in terms of short-term signings, Trossard is probably the signing of the window in terms of short-term signings. In terms of long-term marquee signings, different conversation, right? I think Arsenal long-term would have definitely been better off signing Mikhailo Mudrik. Not to say that Mudrik is a better player than Trossard right here, right now. But I think that Mudrik would have been a better player long-term. Nevertheless, though, Trossard is a fantastic signing. Um, there's no point comparing him to Mudrik because Mudrik has gone to, Ars uh, to Chelsea sorry. anyways. So it's, it's, just, it's a reality that Arsenal fans have to accept. And I think they have accepted because I think a lot of Arsenal fans, from what I've seen on my timeline, are very positive about Trossard. They recognize this guy, what he brings to the table and how good he was for Brighton. Um, finally, last but most certainly not least, Arsenal have signed a young Polish centre-back who I believe played in the Turkish first division and has basically been a has been touted as a young exciting prospect now I know nothing about this player I don't know what profile of player he is I don't know what he excels at I don't know what his weaknesses are and I definitely don't know how to pronounce any of his name so I'm not even going to bother um, it's a very underwhelming signing not a signing that I care too much about his arrival if I'm being completely honest he might turn out to be a decent player who the hell knows but I don't know he seems like another Tommy Yasu type signing and I'm not saying that to be racist because of where he's from I mean it's not like he's from Asia anyway, so I don't know why that would be racist. But anyways, he is a very, very decent young prospect, but it's just all potential at this point, and I'm not going to profess to know much about him. So yeah, anyways, it's been your boy Triple M. Let me know what you think of Arsenal's transfer window. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it, of course, and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace.